Hi children, good morning one and all. I welcome you all to today's video class. In today's video class, I am going to share with you more and more ideas about fire. Fire, you know that uh, it is very important and fire is one of a form of an energy. Especially, you are all in festive mood. You may have your own plan for celebrating Deepavali and what are all the fire crackers you are going to bust on the eve of or on the day of Deepavali. You may have your own plan. But uh, apart from all these things, children, what we teachers and what your parents and what elders wants to happen, this Deepavali might be a prosperous, happy and safe Deepavali. So this lesson gives you more and more idea about fire and the fire accidents, how to prevent it, how to avoid it. Okay, so listen to me very carefully. Okay, fire. What's fire? Fire is a form of an energy. Fire is a form of an energy. It produces the heat and light energy. But what about the early man's opinion about fire? Long time ago, long long ago, the peoples, the early man, they don't know anything about the fire. And eh, for over 400,000 years, the fire has been our best friend and the worst enemy. Yeah, for more than 400,000 years, fire has been our best friend and the worst enemy. Especially our ancestors, thousands of years ago, the man who was living in the forest, the early man, they don't know anything about fire. They did not know what fire was. Especially, they did not know what fire was. And, uh, but they knew well the destruction of fire, the destruction caused by fire. And uh, they might have witnessed, they might have noticed the volcanoes, eruption of volcanoes and the lightning, how they caused uh, <coughs> damage to the destruction to the property as well as to the human lives, as well as to the living beings. Therefore, what happens? He was afraid of fire. Early man frightened to see fire. They were afraid of seeing the fire. They were afraid of fire. But slowly, when the civilization starts to develop, they have changed their opinion. Fire is the best friend. They had an opinion that they come to know that fire is the best friend for human beings. When it is our control, at the same time, when it, be, it goes beyond our control, it will become the worst enemy. So fire is the best friend to all human beings so long as it is kept under our control. Once if it goes out of our control, then it becomes the worst enemy. Okay children, so this was the early man's opinion about fire. They had an opinion in their mind that fire was dangerous. He was very much frightened of fire. They, he was afraid of seeing the fire. Okay, but the opinion, they got changed. Next, three things needed for making fire. How fire is made? What are all the things which we need to make fire? Let me explain next. Yeah. Things needed for making fire. Very important. So, how can we make fire? In those days, early men, they, after some years, they too knew how to make fire. They too knew how to make fire. The early men discovered fire by just rubbing two stones accidentally. When they rubbed two stones accidentally, sparkles they witnessed. Oh, this is cause for fire. They identified, they discovered. And more than that, while lightning, the heavy lightning would strike a forest, it also creates a fire. So in this way, different forms of fire were known by early men. So accidentally, they produced fire by rubbing two stones. But to have to make fire, we need the following three things. Just to look at this picture, children. Picture chart. It gives you a clear picture. This is called a fire triangle. How can we call it? Fire triangle. In this triangle, 
you can find three things which we need to make fire. One is oxygen, O2, that we can get from the air. What we breathe in, oxygen, we need, see, things needed for to make fire. Things needed to make fire. You can't just uh, create fire magically. It's okay. Yeah. So, three things we need to make fire. First one is oxygen O2. We get it from the air. Okay. Then the second thing, fuel. One, two, fuel. This fuel may be in the form of solid things like wood, coal, paper. So it may be in the form of solid things. And fuel may be in the form of liquid things like petrol, kerosene and other oil substances. And sometimes this fuel may be in the form of gas. That is the liquid, liquefied petroleum gas what we use for our cooking purposes. So they are also one of the important fuel for to make fire. Okay. So besides this oxygen O2, we need fuel also to make fire. But the mere existence or availability or the presence of the fuel in the open air does not form fire or does not make fire. Then to make fire, one more thing we need. Can you guess it children? Yeah. From the picture chart, you can easily guess it. That is, we have to produce the heat. Enough heat we have to produce. Without such heat, we cannot make fire. So, third important is heat. So, O2, oxygen and fuel should be mixed. And when we have to produce, we have to give sufficient heat. So, these three things are needed for to make fire. So, it is a result of chemical reaction. It is a fire is the result of chemical reaction. Yeah, of course, it is a chemical reaction. So, when the oxygen in the air combines with the carbon and the hydrogen in a fuel, in a fuel, a chemical reaction takes place. Energy in the form of heat, energy in the form of heat and light is released in this process. This is what we call fire. So, when oxygen in the air combines with the carbon and the hydrogen, in a fuel, a chemical reaction takes place. And in that chemical reaction, heat gets the fire to start, helps the fire to start. So energy, at the time when we make fire, energy in the form of heat and energy in the form of light is released. This is what we call fire. Okay children, so fire gives up heat as a part of its chemical reaction. Yeah, fire gives heat. As a, in the form of chemical reaction, light is also generated as a part of chemical reaction in fire. That's very important. So as I told you, fuel may be in the form of wood, coal, cooking gas and petrol are some examples of fuel. These fuels we need for to make fire. Hodgson, you know that it comes from the air. When you blow on, for example, you have a smoldering paper. Smoldering paper slowly burning without flame. That's called a smoldering paper. See? You can do all these tests at your home in the presence of your parents. So, you, you, when you are supposed to do these tests at your home or in especially in the kitchen, you have to take all preventive measures and you keep your parents with you and then you can do it. You take him. Yes, smoldering paper. Smoldering paper, it means slowly burning but without flames. If you, if you like blow this smoldering paper, it often bursts into flame because there it gets oxygen, gets oxygen, carbon and so it mixed with the carbon and the hydrogen so it starts to flame. And then third on the heat. The third thing needed to make fire is heat. Fuel and oxygen do not make fire by themselves, of course. You can keep fuel and it is surrounded by oxygen, but it, it, they don't make any fire. Then to make fire, you need 
something that is heat yeah a paper or stick lying in the open air would not catch fire if it is so means that's all everything will catch fire and starts to burn to burn a piece of paper or wood we heat it before it catches fire heat may be in the form of match sticks when we crush match stick on the side of a match box it produces a heat then flames comes out that should be generated into the fuel then it starts to produces fire so to make fire we need oxygen available in the open air and fuel may be in the form of solid in the form of gas and in the form of uh, liquids and then heat should be generated heat should be produced in that heat fire starts to produce okay so they are called a chemical reaction in the chemical reaction heat energy is produced and the light energy is produced so, so these three things are needed for to make fire then we generally produce heat with the lighted match that's the only source every fuel has a particular temperature at which it begins to burn this temperature is called a flash point or kindling temperature do you know children let me write it on the board so every fuel has its own every fuel has a particular temperature in that temperature only it begins to burn this temperature is called a flash point this temperature is called a flash point or it is otherwise called a kindling temperature otherwise it is called a kindling temperature so every fuel they don't have the same flash point the flash point or kindling temperature varies from fuel to fuel in that particular temperature only the fuel starts to burn fire starts to produces fire so every fuel has a particular temperature in that temperature only heat produces the fire could you re remember children could you catch the points yeah very important please kindly keep your attention in this point see at which it begins to burn so to produce a fire we need three things fuel heat and oxygen so every fuel has a particular temperature and that particular temperature only it begins to burn or it begins to produce a fire this temperature minimum temperature needed for to produce fire is called a flash point or kindling temperature okay children please keep these two things in your mind and then if it is possible just to make a note of it in your class work note fire is a good servant second thing next we are going to see fire is a good servant but a bad master why people say like that yeah fire is used in many ways it is useful to human beings you can use fire at home for cooking you use fire at power stations chemical power station thermal power station and you use fire in factories companies forms in all other things you use fire for all these purposes fire is used everywhere anywhere now you cannot imagine this modern life without fire fire plays a part and partial half of our everyday life yeah you cannot just imagine the modern life without fire but at the same time it should be kept under our control it should be kept our control if it goes out of our control it causes the accidents <coughs> then fire accidents happens it is very dangerous it is very destructive it causes great damage and losses to the properties as well as to the human beings living beings that is why people say that fire is a good servant but a bad master see fire is a good servant yeah but bad master but you have to take always the bright side of the things be optimistic always don't be pessimistic just analyze keep everything in your mind about the good things of the fire how it is useful in what are all the ways it will be useful to the human beings in many ways it helps us that alone should be kept in your mind you just ignore the fire as a bad master but you should know 
how fire accidents happens how can we prevent it what are all the measures which you have to take when accident happens let me explain all these things one by one yeah before that i will explain how fire is useful to human beings where it is used how it is used i will give you a long list use of fire see uses of fire heat fire is used to, to produce heat fire gives of heat as a part of its chemical reaction from this heat this heat is used to, as a form of energy in various places okay so in those days fire is used to, for hunting also fire is used to, for hunting by early humans they what how they used it for hunting they used to place to fires to direct animals towards the traps okay so in such a way it was used to, fire was used by early man before the development of the civilization and then cooking fire is used for cooking and burning meat to boil vegetables eggs and other foods so we need fire to for cooking purpose also at a households and then light light is generated as a part of the chemical reaction in fire light from fires can also be used to a long distance communication the light which is produced when fire is burnt so this light from fires can also be used as a long distance communication see the heat produced by the fire helps us in many ways this heat helps us to make the water boil to make the things warm to make the room it is used in the heater so during the winter time we can use this heater to keep the room warm so it's a form of an energy it is used and then hunting in those days fire is used for the hunters how they used this fire for hunting early humans they used this fire for hunting purpose placed fires to placed fires they used to place to fire to direct the animals towards a trap and use fire to craft spears and arrows also to craft spear in those days to craft spear arrows these weapons were used by the hunters for hunting so for that they used to fire for to craft all these weapons then cooking very important you cannot just imagine the kitchen you cannot just imagine the art of cooking without fire since dawn to dusk from dawn to dusk we need fire for everything for preparing dosas for preparing morning prayer tiffin before that you have to you would you like to have bed coffee bed tea and for everything we need fire for cooking then morning tiffin after lunch evening tiffin the night supper for to prepare all these things your, your mother has to use cooking gas as a form of an energy it produces the flames it produces the fire so it is used for cooking and then light see light is generated as a part of the chemical reaction when we make fire light is also generated light from fire can be used as a long distance communication light long distance communication so fire is used for long distance communication the light produced is used for long distance communication then the electricity most electricity generated in the world today relies on burning of fossils fuels natural gases and gold and the atomic energy so electricity is produced by burning the coal charcoal fossils fuels natural gases when we burn all these things a heat energy is produced from that heat electricity is generated so it is used in many ways most electricity is generated in the world today relies on all these things only so without the electricity see and fifth point
electricity. So electricity is produced. How it is produced? It see burning of coal, burning of fossil fuels. See fossil fuels, coals, and then natural gases. Natural gas. When we burn them, it produces the heat. It produces the light. From such heat and light, we produce electricity. So now, in the modern world, you cannot imagine this modern world without electricity. Then manufacturing, yeah. In the manufacturing industries, firms, factories, we use fire. Steel plant and battery, most manufacturing systems rely on furnace to help to develop the products. So in the furnace, we use fire. So manufacturing industries, firms, cannot survive without fire then woodworking so manufacturing industries we use fire in these manufacturing industries manufacturing industries we use fire then woodworking there also we use fire see how it is used in the woodworking industries from very early in human history we used to fire to bend wood even it is used to, to bend the strong iron bars also so fire is used in many ways and to produce heat heat from heat we produce as we, we use heat to for keep the room warm and for many purposes we use heat that is produced generally from the fire and in those days, the element used to fire for hunting and even nowadays also, campfire. When you, you, when you want to go for uh, trucking, especially in the forest areas, at the time campfire only helps you to save you from the prowling of the animals, wild animals. Yeah. Then we use uh, fire for cooking. Your mother, do, your mother does everything in the kitchen with the help of this fire only cooking. It helps us for cooking. Then light, it is used for long distance communication. Then electricity, it is also produced from the fire. So it helps us to make our light burn. It illuminates the world. So to illuminate this world, fire is needed. So it helps us to produce electricity. And then it is used in the manufacturing industries like steel plants, pottery, in all types of manufacturing plants and woodworking also. So we need fire. For all these things, fire is a good servant again, but it is a bad master. It is a good servant as long as it is kept our control. So, more than that, fire has been used by humans in rituals, in agriculture, for clearing, land, for clearing lands, for cooking, generating heat and light, for signaling, smelting, forging, cremation and as a weapon for mode of destruction. For all these things, we have to depend on fire. Okay, so the uses of fire cannot be just underestimated. It is used in many ways. It, it is associated with the human life, with the evolution of human life and with the civilization of the human wood is very important. So every fuel has a, so every fire helps the human beings in different or in many ways. So fire is very useful. So fire is the, but at the same time, fire is a good servant, but a bad master. And then, then the next one, children, see, uses of fire we have seen, then sometimes, though fire has this much uses, though fire is useful to us in many ways, sometimes if it goes out of our control, it causes accidents. At that time, we should be very careful. Let me show you some pictures, see, how it is used in thermal plants in electricity see this picture shows you the uses of fire so the fire is used in chemical industries the fire is used in manufacturing industries the fire is used in almost all the industries especially cement producing industries so nowadays you just could not imagine this industries manufacturing industries without fire so fire is used in all these industries so very important this picture shows you clearly how it is used in the industries and then 
see it is also used at home for cooking purpose we use our mothers use fire for cooking purpose without fire you cannot just imagine the art of cooking at home we have to depend on fire for cooking since dawn to dusk we use fire for cooking purposes and then it is also used to, to produce flames especially see in the electricity to produce this electric field it is used see so from the, the burning of the fire coal and other fuels heat is produced and the energy is produced from that energy see we produces the electricity so it is used in almost all these industries and then so children it is its uses cannot just be underestimated it is used in many ways next let me explain fire accidents how it is caused our carelessness and negligence sometimes causes for fire accidents so you should be very careful in the uses of fire when you use fire you should have a clear idea where you are going to use how it is to be used see fire accidents mostly we use it is for food warm or homes in winter and to generate electricity but on the other hand if it gets out of control it can be very dangerous three things are needed to start a fire as i told you i have enlisted see how these fire accidents are happening and how can we control how can we prevent it okay see the first step <coughs> we have to use fire involving solid materials such as wood paper and textiles fire involving flammable liquids petrol diesel gas and fire involving gases fire involving metals okay fire accidents how it happens how can we prevent it second part fire accidents so the first part of this lesson deals with the uses of fire how it is made what all the things we need for to make fire so many things i have explained and you have learned next part second part of this lesson deals with the fire accidents so this fire accidents kitchen fire the most common type of fire so sometimes when your mother switch on the knob of the gas stove she may forget to close the stove after completing her, her work after sometimes if we if she if your mother lit a match stick then it will cause for fire accidents so this fire accidents kitchen fire is quite common it is it, ha- it is happening everywhere and anywhere so sometimes it leads to heavy it causes for heavy damages to the property as well as to the human lives so now and then then and there mostly the women who are doing works in the kitchen has to be very careful as soon as the works gets over they have to switch up the knobs and if it is possible they have to switch up the knobs of the cylinder also so it is so safe when they want to continue their work at the time only they have to switch on the knob of the gas cylinder so they can avoid this kitchen fire accident kitchen fire accidents so these things can be very much very to the greater extent can be minimized if we are being careful and then electrical fire is very dangerous electrical fires are caused by a number of factors electrical fires so this kitchen fire accidents are caused by our carelessness and our negligence as soon as the cooking box gets over we have to switch off the knobs of the gas cylinder that is very important so if it is in the on position after some time if you starts to scratches the match sticks that's all so it causes for accidents so it is very important once works gets over you have to switch off the knobs of the cylinder and then we by doing such things we can avoid the fire accident especially kitchen fire safe and then electrical fire electrical fires are caused by number of factors including faulty electrical appliances how this electrical fire is caused faulty 
faulty appliances. So when you want to fit the electrical appliances at your home, especially fan, tube light, and then um, see AC, we use as many electrical appliances at home. It, it should be guaranteed. You have to buy and fit only such a guaranteed electrical appliances. Worn out or faulty electrical wiring. Yeah. Faulty or worn out. Electrical appliance, electrical wiring. That's it called worn out wiring. It also sometimes cause for firing. So we have to be very careful. We can avoid this electrical firing by using the standard company products and improper use of electrical outlets. Improper use of electrical outlets. See, improper use of electrical outlets. They also cause for electrical fire accidents. So we have to use. So whenever we want to fit electrical appliances in our house, we have to get guaranteed and standard company products from the standard selling agency. And we have to invite a known electrician who is very, very familiar with all these things. With the help of such a good electricians only, we have to fix all these electrical appliances to prevent the electrical fire accidents. Then heater fires. Sometimes the fire is caused by heaters. Especially heater and portable heaters causes for this problem. Heater. See, let me give you an explanation. How it happens? Heater fire accidents. Heater fire accidents. These things are normally heater fire accidents are happening everywhere because of the portable heaters. This portable heater causes portable heater causes this fire accidents. For this problem, automated heater should be used. But whenever you use automated Whenever you use automated heater, you have to keep an eye on it. Whether it has been guaranteed by the producers or manufacturing industries, that should be watched out. When you buy the automatic heater, that you have to be very careful. After sometimes the automatic heater, what happens? The fire, the, sorry, the supply of the current has been stopped temporarily. Once if it gets enough heat, that is automated, the system has been devised in such a way, but you have to check it. Even after that, if it continues the electrical supply, that's all. Accidents may happen. Sometimes you may get electric shock also. So, heater fire. And the last one, smoking. Related fire. Smoking related fires. Smoking related fires. Mostly these types of fire accidents are caused by the smokers. So, they just throw the last part of the smoky materials. So whenever it catches, whenever it touches the papers or other flammable materials, it, ca it catches fire and then it causes for fire accidents. Okay children, so, so far now let me sum it up. Fire accidents are quite unavoidable, but if you are a bit careful, you can avoid such fire accidents. Fire accidents are in many, and many types of fire accidents are happening. Kitchen fires normally your mother can have a control on it. Electrical fires quite unavoidable. But we have to use only the guaranteed electrical appliances and then heat fires and then smoke related fires. Okay. Then how to uh, prevent? Suppose prevention is better than cure. I know that children all of you know very well. But uh, apart from that sometimes due to our negligence or carelessness these fire accidents happen. If once if it happens, how to save the people as well as your property? Let me sum it up. Okay. How can we save our property as well as human life from these destructions? First step, if the fire has no fuel to feed on, no burning can take place. Remove the fuel from the for accident place how to control 
fire many they have many causes for accidents fire accidents especially see once fire accidents occurs or happened you are in that place you can give suggestions you can suggest something to avoid or minimize the losses at least that you can do see burning fuel fuel has to feed on so we can take away the fuel from the place fuel should be removed fuel should be removed from the place fuel should be removed from the place of accidents so when the fuel has been taken away when there is no fuel to feed on no burning can take place of course so that you can by doing such things you can control the fire you can control the fire so i will give you some tips how can we control the fire when fire accidents occurs or happens okay second way of putting out a fire is to prevent the oxygen from reaching it to prevent oxygen to prevent oxygen from reaching the fire point so once if you do these things definitely you can bring the fire under your control so once if you prevent oxygen from reaching the power point no supply of oxygen means no fire yeah no supply of oxygen means no fire so small fires can be put out or smothered how can we smothered or how can you if uh, the prevent the supply of oxygen a tamp blanket or a sock can be thrown sock a thick sock or tamp blanket see so a tamp blanket can be used to tamp blanket tamp blanket can be used or sock can be thrown on the fire so it stops oxygen reaching the burning material so it stops the fire sometimes carbon dioxide is used you can use carbon dioxide also to extinguish fire so the second step first step you have to remove the fuel from the fireplace so that is a, when the fire, fuel is removed no firing can take place there is no fuel there is no fire second you can prevent the supply of oxygen prevent the oxygen from reaching the power from the fireplace so to prevent the reaching of oxygen you can do one you can use the sock or tamp blanket you can throw it on the fire on the place where the fire caught so what happens is stop oxygen reaching the burning material it should completely stop sometimes you can use carbon dioxide also to extinguish fire then third is putting out a fire is to remove the heat third steps so first step you have taken away the fuel material from the place second you just prevented you stopped oxygen reaching the burning place then the third way of putting out fire is to remove the heat third step is to remove the heat this is the third important steps so by removing the heat if the temperature can be brought down once if the heat is removed what does it mean children can you guess it yeah the temperature can be brought down below the flash point temperature if the temperature below the flash point what happens naturally the flame can be brought under control so flash point so by preventing the third way of putting out a fire is to remove the heat if the temperature can be brought down below the flash point the fuel stops burning the fuel stops burning so you blow on a burning matchstick or a candle to put it you see you blow on a burning matchstick or a candle if you do like this a burning candle can be distinguished you remove the hot air around the flame bring it down its temperature how it happens when you blow out like this see suppose it is a hand burning candle immediately the fire can be distinguished the fuel the burning material 
see how it happens matches can you can put out the fire in doing so you remove the hot air around the flame so it bring it down its temperature below the flash point that's the thing how the fire is put out when you blow out means the heat or the temperature around the air so flame bring it down its temperature so below the flash point and the candle goes out sometimes water is also sprayed on fire once if you spray the water on the fire burning material it absorbs the heat from the burning fuel and lowers the temperature but you should be very careful children don't throw water on the electrical fire accidents okay the blanket of water also cuts off the supply of oxygen and so the fire is extinguished okay some fires cannot be put out with water if water is sprayed on to all your fire see okay so next so these are all the general things which one can follow to bring the fire under our control so if it's a kitchen you have to remove the fuel from the burning place from the accident place by doing such things you can completely stop fueling to feed on so fire can be brought under our control second we are putting out the fire is to prevent the oxygen from reaching the fireplace for to affect these things you can use the tap blanket or sock and third way of putting out to fire is to remove the heat so to remove the heat you can use many ways and you can just sparkle the sprang the water on it or you can blow out or you can use a thick material just to, to cover it so the heat is when the heat is stopped then the temperature has been brought down so when the bring when you bring down its temperature below the flash point then the fire can be controlled very the fire can be controlled and then children let me give you some tips types of fire extinguishers see pesticides to waste water what waste to be used on fire accidents involving solid materials dry chemical effective on all classes of fire carbon dioxide is to be used on chemical or electrical fires and used in kitchen or other grease fires also so types of fire extinguisher first water extinguisher water fire extinguisher are the most popular fire extinguisher see water fire extinguisher water fire extinguisher water fire extinguisher water fire extinguisher are the most popular fire extinguisher type and they are and they are suited to a class fire risk the water fire extinguishers are the most common extinguishers found in premises it is used for fires caused by textiles coals wood paper and fabrics so water fire extinguishers are available you know that well children so this water fire extinguishers just forcefully supply the water on the fire material so it is used for fires caused by textiles and fire caused by coal wood and paper and fabrics then foam extinguisher second foam extinguisher so this foam extinguisher can also be used to, to bring the fire under our control they are the most common type of extinguisher used for class b fire they are used for fires involving organic materials like cardboard paper fabrics wood and coal when these things caught fire we can use foam extinguisher with the help of foam extinguisher we can stop the further flowing of this fire when it is caught by these things so they are the most common type of extinguisher used for class b fire then dry powder extinguisher dry powder extinguisher these dry powder extinguisher very well can be used for fires involving electrical equipments when electrical fire accidents 
happens or occurs, there you can use this tri powder extinguisher because this is quite safe. Okay, and fire caused by flammable metals. And the last carbon dioxide CO2 extinguishers. They are used in extinguishing electrical fires. The CO2 extinguisher can be used to, by, to extinguish electrical fires and the fires involving flammable liquids such as petrol. So when it happens and a hot chemical extinguisher, see dry powder extinguisher and a chemical extinguisher. So these extinguisher can be used in fire involved cooking oils and fans. Okay, so fire accidents, taking away the fuel, if the fire has not fuel to feed on, so we can take out from the place to prevent the oxygen from the supply place. Third way is to spray the water to reduce the heat, to remove the heat. Some fires can be brought to complete control. So we can use the carbon dioxide extinguisher also to happen, the, to prevent or to avoid more damages. So these things we have to and follow and then so kitchen fires most common type of air, electrical fires, heater fires, smoky related fires and all these fires can be well managed once if it happens with the help of all these things. But you should be very careful when you are using these fire extinguishers. Some fires cannot be put out with water. If water is sprayed onto an oil fire what happens children you know that? See where you are not supposed to be see. Water fire extinguishers are used to, to control or to prevent some types of fire accidents only. Foam extinguishers can be used when the fire is caused by the fuels, solid fuels. There you can use this water fire extinguisher and foam fire extinguishers to control the fire. And dry powder extinguishers and chemical extinguishers can be used when fire is caused by oils and electricity. So, these are all the extinguishers which you can use just to, to prevent the heavy damages caused by the fire. So, when the fire is caused by oil, you are not supposed to use there the water. If the oil float, because if you use the water there, the oil will float to the surface of the water and continues to burn. This can be very dangerous because water can flow quickly carrying the burning oil with it and spreading the fire. So water should also be used on fires caused by electrical appliances. If we use the water, what happens? The person spraying water might receive an electric shock and he can be killed sometimes. So a carbon dioxide extinguisher is best thing to fight an electric fire. So we spend millions of rupees every year to fight fire. Especially trained people are there always to help us to save the people from the fire accidents on the whole we have to learn rather how to control fire and put it to good in our use so very important okay children let me sum it up so one of, we can prevent we have to prevent the fire happening after fire accidents we should follow the preventive rules therefore we can save our life we can save our properties also apart from that once if it happens you should know how to uh, minimize the losses, how to save the people from the fire accidents. So most of the uh, genuine fire accidents are kitchen fire that can be controlled by using the water fire extinguishers. When fire or uh, accidents are caused by the solid materials, foam extinguishers can also be used to, to prevent such things. When fire accidents is caused by electricity, dry powder extinguishers can be used and when action is caused by chemical extinguishers, there also you can use these when fire extinguishers is caused by fuels, you can use chemical extinguishers. One thing you have to keep in your mind, when fire is caused, when fire action is caused by oil or by electricity, there you should not use the water to bring the fire under control because it helps the burning materials to spread various places. Oil starts to float on the surface of the water, so it, it increases the, the burning, so it increases the fire, it spreads out the fire. And another uh, thing, if you use uh, water to control the fire caused by electricity, the person may get electric shock. Okay, fine. So, every year, you know children, every year government 
makes the people to be alert. Every year government releases some magazines, every year it gives, releases out the uh, brochures, how to avoid the accidents, how to prevent the fire accidents. So, and they are doing some demo also in schools and the colleges and the students can take all these informations to their home and even in the factories, in the companies, every year the, the government day is spending a lot a lot for to uh, conduct these uh, model seminars and uh, model classes also. So many things are happening. So apart from all these things, uh, our carelessness only causes for these fire accidents. So we have to minimum, we have to minimize these accidents. And then long ago there were no firemen. In those days there were no firemen. Suppose if fire accidents happen, do you know how the people can control those things? How the people helped to bring out the fire? They form a human chain like this. People will stand in a long queue. They form a human chain. And then the person who is standing here by the water body carries the water in the bucket. He passes it to one by one. Then it reaches the accident place. There they pour the water and they can bring the fire in the uh, fire into their control. See, I will show you this picture. It helps you to understand. See, we can invite the trained fire brigades. So they come and with the help of these instruments, they can bring the fire. They can bring the fire into our control. They can use these weapons to extinguish the fire. So fire actions can be controlled or minimized with the help of these things. But in those days, these fire brigades are not available. The trained firemen who are ready to fight with the fire is, are not, they are not available. At that time, people form a human chain and they helped the, they helped the fire to be extinguished. How they did it? See, and in this way. So human chains are formed. So long ago there were no firemen. When fire broke out, everybody became a firefighter. Everybody became a firefighter. People formed human chains. They still do it if it is required and pass to buckets of water from a well or a barn to the blaze. Now there are laws. Okay. So in those days it happened. See the people, they form human chains and then the bucket of water is supplied from the water bodies to the blaze. So they can bring the fire under their control. So nowadays even it happens in cities, especially in villages. Because from the village they cannot contact the fire brigades or firefighters. Before the firefighters reaches the place, they themselves can do something at least to, to prevent the, the further spreading out of the fire. So it can be stopped. See, the fire accidents are happening, quite unavoidable. So whenever fire accidents happens in a particular place, we have to use intelligent, we have to act, we have to react brilliantly. We have to use the modern methods and weapons to fight with the fire. So what types of uh, fire accidents takes place in a particular place? So that particular type of uh, fire extinguishers recommended for to that particular fire has to be used in a wise manner to minimize the losses and to bring the fire, bring the fuel under our control. Then see, sometimes it may happen, the house may set fire. At that time, we have to, we have to force, we have to spread the water. We can spring the water pour the water on the fuel materials so we can bring the flame of fire to some extent under our control. This is I see it may happen especially during the summer time. These roofs of the houses especially thatched roofs may got fire. So at that time the people should not get alarmed. So they have to be ready to fight with the fire. So they can bring water from the nearby water bodies and they can spread out the water on the burning material so they can bring the fire under their control. See, electrical fire accidents is very dangerous. Only the trained people can bring this electrical fire accidents can be employed to control it. So with the help of these weapons they can bring and instruments they can bring this flame of flame caused by electrical accidents to some extent. And uh, see, 
okay children so all these pictures helps you to understand how the fire accident when fire accident happens how can we minimize the losses and then see every now and then what are all the preventive measures especially the last even how to put out fire i have explained very well and then last things you have to know preventive measures very important so and building construction should be followed strictly the government has given some instructions that should be followed so the preventive measures of fire accidents so preventive measures one proper space between buildings proper space between buildings that should be observed when we go for construction of new buildings government has already recommended these things so we have to leave enough space between buildings so we can avoid we can prevent the spread of the fire when it happens then there should be sufficient gap between two building top to reduce fire spread and then every new buildings must ensure fire preventive norms they have to ensure fire prevention norms third fire fighting work to see enough space then second preventive measure fire precaution norms fire precaution fire precaution norms especially nowadays in theaters and in all other public places where people gathers when children gathers there fire precaution norms has to be followed they have to intimate they will well inform and make the people to get alarmed when fire happens in one particular place so that should be fixed in the buildings fire fighting workers with special equipments fire brigade trained people service should be made available the service of the specially trained people should be made available so we have to follow all these things government keep recommending the people to observe all these things so and then uh, <coughs> they can help the suffering from burns and see the discovery of fire and it uses help the early man to cope with the natural fire so fires can help us in many ways at the same time so long as it is kept our control nothing would happen so we have to follow the instruction often given by the government so fire can be best friend so we we should know also how to give first aid place the first of all the victims of the fire accidents can be saved before to take the victims of the fire accident to the hospital you can give the first aid place the burned area under running cool water for at least 5 minutes to to reduce the swelling apply an antiseptic spray antibiotic ointment or aloe vera cream loosely wrap a gas bandage around the burn and then you can take the victim to the hospital okay children so fire is still worshiped by many in many parts of the world fire is no doubt indeed a friend but as we know it can be dangerous enemy once it gets out of our control okay children so let me show you all the pictures what i have brought see this picture fire accidents and fire brigades how they are fighting fire accidents how they are fighting to prevent the fire accidents how to prevent see the happening of such things so they give their valuable services to the people when fire accidents takes places and see the three important materials needed for to make fire and then kitchen tip see keep banking soda on hand to combat culinary fires so we can bring well brought the kitchen fire under our control by using see this uh, banking soda okay fine see the electrical fire accidents that can also be very dangerous one but at the same time the preventive measures should be followed apart from that once if it happens we have to follow the methods to bring the accidents damage minimize and then see house fires it can be brought under our control by using the water extinguishers okay then see the chemical <coughs> factory sometimes get fire it is very dangerous especially trained people are always there to bring these uh, fire accidents under our control 
and then people can form see the chain human chain to prevent uh, human chain to bring the uh, flame under control when water when before the arrival of the fire brigade people can do these things at least uh, to minimize the loss or the damage okay children so far now this lesson deals with uh, what is fire what are the things we need to make fire and then uh, different types of fire accidents when it happens where it happens how it happens how can we uh, distinguish once if the fire action occurs how can we distinguish the fire what are all the distinguishing methods to distinguish or to put up the fire electrical fire is different fire, oil fire caused by oil fuel is different and the fire caused by the solid material is different so we have to use the the, the particular electrical of the particular fire extinguishers to uh, control the fire accidents okay then what are the preventive measures we have to take that also has been discussed in detail in this lesson last fire is a good servant but a bad master so children you should be very careful while using fire fire helps us in many ways in the modern world you cannot just imagine without fire at the same time you should know the proper and the wise use of fires so should not be careless when you use the fire you should be very careful you should be alert at the same time as see after learning many things from this lesson you can share it with your friends how can you how they too can avoid fire accidents they can convey this message to their a mother to their parents also share it with everyone else children and try to celebrate this deepavali as a safe deepavali okay whenever you crackers the fire crackers you should be when you burst fire crackers you should be very careful you have to take all preventive measures let me meet you in the next video class thank you children till that have a nice day